defining which metal empire presents Festival of the Witch 2. A two-day event featuring witches, bitches, food, and the best of the Midwest at the Crew Rock Lounge in Berwyn, Illinois. Beginning on Friday, July 21st with performances by The Broken Deity, Dark Trilogy, Damien Thor, Wrath, Savior from Anger, Cold Bearded Killers, Midwest Cartel, and Buried in Yellow. Then finishing on Saturday, July 22nd with Reckless Hop, Corners of Sanctuary, Sunless Sky, Scream King, Matiana, Psychomancer, Cold Black River, Unquiet Eddie, and Rosaries. Also featured will be the mystic arts of Ron Fitzgerald's Realm on the 22nd, and the sexy and twisted entertainment of Lady India and the wicked bitches of the Midwest on both the 21st and 22nd with more to be announced. This'll be one hell of a good time, so come out to Festival of the Witch 2 on July 21st through the 22nd. Tickets are $20 at the door for both nights. Ticket price includes dinner at the event. Doors open at 4 p.m. Show starts at 6 p.m. on Friday, 5 p.m. on Saturday. Brought to you by Chicago Metal Factory, the Pits of Metal Chaos, Rebel Radio, Metal Devastation Radio, and Dividing Witch Metal Empire. 18 or older only, visit the event page on Facebook. Get in the pits of Metal Chaos with Tanya as she interviews the best in metal from around the world to the gates of hell and back. Now kneel down and show respect for the true creator of Metal Chaos, Slayer Tanya. Beg for mercy and let the chaos begin. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pits of Metal Chaos. This is Dave, and I got online with me Kevin from hey. Soundless Sun- Sky, Peerless Steel Recording Artist. Hey, Kevin. Hey, how you doing, man? Pretty good. So, Kevin, uh, when when did this band uh, Soundless Sky form? Well, Soundless Sky started in 2014. Uh, uh, the lineup has completely changed since then, except for the singer Juan Ricardo. He's the only uh, original founding member. Uh, Kern and I joined about two years ago. Um, we, down the line, ended up uh, letting go our drummer and our guitar player quit. I had started on uh, bass and moved over to guitar, and we got Colton Reedy on drums. And we don't have a permanent bass player right now. We're actually looking for one. But, uh... Yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. Cool. So, um, how how did you guys get invited to play the Festival of the Witch? Uh, well, we actually played Festival of the Witch last year, uh, and Deborah Steele had contacted uh, us and asked us if we wanted to play this one. So we said sure. Cool. So, so what? When when did you start playing uh, bass guitar and guitar? At what age? Uh, I started playing bass first. Uh, I was 15. I'm tw- almost 24 years old now, 
so I've been playing for um, eight, nine years. Uh, I picked up guitar about a year after playing bass because I wanted to be able to write my own music, so I figured why not simultaneously learn them since they're such similar in instruments anyways. And i uh, been playing ever since. I've been in a couple bands, but Sun the Sky is the first really big, you know, going out and playing live a lot band. Hey, um, Introduce yourself. Uh, Kevin, this is Tanya, the owner of the show. Anyways, um, I want to know, what happened with the show with Corner Sanctuary and um, Ridiculous Tricks? Why, why'd you guys dip out of that show? Um, uh, which show was that? Um, you, you, you got... No. Uh, no. Thursday, Friday. I, 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 don't, I don't know, the one on Friday, I guess? She was talking about the show. Uh, you guys have just had scheduled with uh, uh, ridiculous uh, tricks and uh, corner of the sanctuary. In Indiana. Oh, in Indiana. At the gear. Oh, you know, I I personally don't know what happened with that. Um, we we actually ended up getting double booked somehow. I I I don't know what ended up happening. Some 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 horrible form of miscommunication happened. Um, uh, we actually have for months been planning to play um, the uh, show for a promoter in our hometown, Beth Answell, who it's her birthday show, and we've uh, been set to play that for a while. It's Saturday, and we we kind of have to play that. Um, and we were set to play the Festival of the Witch on Saturday, and then we had a misunderstanding. I, like I said, I, I don't personally know 100% what ended up happening, but, you know, we, we really wanted to come down to Chicago and play Festival of the Witch, so okay. we ended up uh, moving ourselves over to Friday night. Okay, let me ask you. Have you ever played with Corner Sanctuary and Ridiculous Tricks before? Uh, we played with Corners of Sanctuary, uh, actually last year we did a little three run, three run tour, uh, actually the Festival of the Witch was the first show, uh, and we went to Indiana and that show actually fell through, but, uh, we went to, I believe it was Detroit, uh, for the third show, and yeah, we, uh, we, we played with them, we, I have not played with the other band though. I remember you guys were supposed to do like uh, three or four shows for Deborah last year. Then shit fell through. Up for the, you did like one or two shows, but that's right. It was uh, three shows, uh, and the, the Indiana one was the one that fell through. Uh, uh, the Metal Girl too in Wisconsin. You guys were supposed to play that one. Got that one fell through too. I'm sorry. What was that? The Met the Metal Girl in Wisconsin. That one got caught off too. Yeah, that, that's the show we were going to come out to, me and my wife, to the Metal Grill. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, we, it, it happens, it sucks. <laughs> we want to play everywhere all the time. <laughs> so how did you guys get signed to uh, Pierce Steel Records? Um, well, I, I was not actually in the band at the time that um, we uh, were signed to Pierce Steel Records. Uh, I believe... They signed back in 2014 when Firebreather came out. Um, Juan Ricardo, I believe, um, you know, a lot of the bands that we play with are actually Pierce Steel bands. And I know Juan being in the scene for as long as he has, so I'm sure he had that connection through someone and they ended up liking what they heard and they ended up signing Sunless Sky. So tell us about the new uh, disc, Doppelganger. Doppelganger. Yeah, it's, it's honestly a completely different beast from the first one. The production's a lot better. Um, the musicianship, I think, is uh, a whole different level. It's a whole different lineup except for one. Um, Sun of the Sky has been a, a different band from the first record for a while now in the, in the live setting. Um, you know, lineup changes have come about and, you know, things have changed slightly. And, you know, I think we've, gotten a lot lot tighter as a band and you know playing all the shows that we've been playing it really helps you know tighten you up you know <laughs> playing is the best practice you can get now with that the title doppelganger is that meaning like you know like a, a twin person or something like that oh yeah it's it's a german word it's uh doppelganger it means it's somebody who's a basically a clone of you uh, 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 
uh, we actually, off the album art, which I designed, um, the, the little doppelganger is actually based off of a D&D character, Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, the doppelganger is like a little alien succubus thing that uh, takes takes form of whatever it wants. So it basically, is a, you know, dittos itself. Now, how many tracks are on the doppelganger album? Uh, there's ten. Mm. Then how? How how long is uh, the album? Uh, I believe it clocks in at about forty five minutes. Forty forty five. That's cool. Now you guys are American power metal, right? Yeah, that's what we like to brand ourselves as. Now, can you tell? Us, I, can you say tell us about the song Immortality? Immortality. <laughs> um. I, well, I wasn't in the band when we wrote that song, or when Selma Sky wrote that song. Um, we haven't actually played that song in a really long time. Yeah. That, I like, that was a fun song to play, though. How about Black Symphony? Black Symphony. Well, Juan wrote that song, um, and he, he actually wrote everything, the, all the instruments. Um, and, you know, Kern and I came in and added our little spice, and... Um, it's a song that's about, uh, you, you know, the, the harshes of war and, you know, going, going into the battlefield. And it's, it's basically a tribute to, you know, all those people who give those, give their lives to protecting and serving. Cool. How about we spin that song right now? Great. Let's do it. All right. All right, everybody, here's Black Symphony by Sunless Sky. Enjoy this.
right, that was Black Symphony by Sunless Sky. We're back on the air with Kevin. Hey, what's up? So, Kevin, uh, what sh- what uh, shows have you guys done recently? Where you guys been traveling to? Well, on Sunday we played in Canton, Ohio, at the Buzzbin Arcade. Great venue, pinball machines, Mortal Kombat. Can't go wrong. Um, the night before that, on Saturday, we played in Philly at a uh, mixed stews with uh, Power Theory and Legion. Um, and the night before that, we played at St. Vitus with uh, Sacred Oath, uh, St. Vitus in New York City. And how, how did those shows go? Oh, they were great. The, uh, the St. Vitus one was awesome. It's, you know, it's kind of a known club. It's, I like to think it's kind of, you know, New York's uh, Whiskey Go-Go as far as, you know, wanting to play there as a metal band. Um, and it was just really cool to get to play there. You know, King Diamond and Slayer, you know, passed through there. And it was just, it was cool. And uh, the fans were great, you know. Everybody was awesome. We made, we made, definitely made new fans that night. And it was, it was great. It was a great show. That's very cool. So now, be, be, besides Sun of the Sky, are you, are you in any other bands previous, currently? Um, I am doing a couple of projects right now. I'm recording uh, an EP for a uh, black and death metal band called uh, From the Hollow Tree. Uh, currently recording that. Uh, nothing nothing too serious. Just going to do a release right now. It's, Sun of the Sky is kind of taking up most of my time, and it's been kind of rough finding other musicians, you know, besides uh, my guitar player, Sean Kahn, and my vocalist, Devin Wyrick, uh, around here who want to do the same thing. So, you know, just put out what I have and, you know, see where it goes from there. So how's the hometown fan base out in Ohio for a sunless guy? Oh, it's amazing. It's, it's great. Uh, you know, especially Kern will tell you, you know, he's been... Being in Nevermore and Annihilator, that guy's been all over the place. And he's seen a ton of different scenes. And even me, you know, with Summer Sky going out now a whole lot and getting to see different scenes. Cleveland, people in Cleveland, like, sometimes like to rag on the scene, you know, kind of take it for granted a little bit. But we, we have a really good scene out here in Cleveland, all things considered. And the, the people are great. I, I love our scene the community is fantastic yeah it's very cool so prior to Soundless Sky what what bands have you played in previously um I uh I put a couple albums out before Soundless Sky I was in a metal core or a melodic death metal band called uh Pandemos put an EP out um and uh before that I was in a band called Small by Apathy we were like Progressive melodic death metal, kind of like into eternity, uh, power metal y, you know, technical stuff. Um, put an album out that when I was 17. Um, and I've done little things here and there, but Sun of the Sky has definitely been the biggest thing I've ever done. Now, on the Doppelganger album, do you have any favorite songs for yourself? Um, I would have to say probably Doppelganger. I really like that song. It's fun to play. It's catchy. It's just, it, it's a really well-written song, I think. Um, kudos to Kern. Um, Netherworld is one of my favorites. Uh, Stone Gods is a good song. I just, I like the way it grooves. Um, I, I think, I think it, in their own way, they're all pretty, pretty good songs. I don't want to sound like, you know, uh, a jerk when I say that. Karen actually wrote most of the songs, but I, I think that the album flows very well together, and I think it's a giant step up from the last album. And all we want to do with the next one is have it be a step up from Doppelganger. Now, how how the album sale has been going for Doppelganger? Uh, Doppelganger's been out since uh, April seventh. Well, how how's the record record sales been? Uh, I actually don't know. Um, I don't have the numbers personally, but at 
at shows, we've been doing great. We've been selling tons of CDs. Um, it's actually been surprising and flattering and overwhelming. Um, but yeah, we're doing very good as far as selling at shows go. I'm not sure what the peer sale numbers are off the top of my head, but we've been doing pretty good with it, I'd like to think. Probably over overseas, you guys probably do good. Um, yeah. Uh, we, well, we actually went to Europe uh, back in April. We were out there for a month in Eastern Europe, played in over 10 countries over a month span. We did 26 shows in a row. Yeah, how, how was the experience? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, that's, that's kind of the American musician's dream is to go overseas and, you know, play music. And uh, even if I don't do anything else musically with my life, which, you know, I, I know and I hope I will, uh, having that experience, I can, I, I can die happy. <laughs> and, you know, same thing with the Euro Europeans. They want to come over to America. It's, you know, grass is greener on the other side type situation. Yeah, you go go over to Europe, and it's like the like how the '80s were with metal scene over here in the United States. Right? Yeah, it's a it's a totally different world, and the fans are so awesome. They're amazing. They're uh, it's it's just there's a whole different attitude, you know. People people don't go to shows all the time because they're not always near where they are. So some people are driving 70, 80 mm -hmm. kilometers, which is a lot, you know, for those people out there with how much money they make and how much cash costs and all that. So it's it's flattering. You know, so one person came out to one of the shows just because he saw we were a power metal band because Eastern Europe doesn't get a lot of power metal. They get death metal and they get black metal, but they don't get a lot of power metal. So, you know, it's very cool to see people come out and see you just because just cause of those reasons. Now, Kevin, what's the fondest memory you've, you've had since you've been in this band? Oh, uh, de definitely Europe. <laughs> definitely Europe. We, uh, probably the, the, the best show in Europe and my fondest night was when we played a show in Czech Republic. I don't remember the city, but it was this black metal bar and it was called, I, I don't remember the, the Czech, uh, name, but it translated to the priest cave and it was this little dingy, uh, dungeon looking venue you walk in it's all stone there's a, a uh, crucifix on the back behind the drums and there's satanic artwork everywhere and the bathroom looks like a Slayer album art cover and you know it, it was it was great it was amazing it, you know the atmosphere there was just so metal <laughs> you know everybody was having an amazing time it was so small and packed and everybody was just rushing it it was it was great it was Everything that metal should be. Now, since you've been in the sun of the sky, is there a funniest moment? Oh, uh, we've had we've had many. Oh goodness, uh, we're we're all very tight knit and very close, which is amazing. It's it's so good to be in a band where everybody you know feels like family and. Almost every other moment is a funny moment. <laughs> At least we try to make it that way, you know. It keeps the mood light, and, you know, we just have fun with it. We like playing music. Um, but, as far as funniest moment goes. But, but, like, you, 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 you never tripped on the stage or anything? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. We, we haven't had any disasters yet, but, <laughs> God, it's, it's inevitable. It really is. With how many shows we've been playing, I'm surprised something hasn't happened yet. You know, probably the worst thing is on stage is uh, Juan likes to uh, whip the mic cord around, and if you stand too close, you might get you might get hit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so what do you think about social media? What do I think about like social media yeah, as a whole? Uh, is it important to the band? Oh, it, it's extremely crucial. It's it, sometimes it's hard to keep up with, but it's it's very very very. Uh, in today's day and age where everything is through the internet and everything is interconnected, you need to have that. Uh, me personally, I, I don't like Facebook. You know, I, I think that I would feel a lot 
better if I don't have a Facebook because there's just so much crap sometimes, you know, and it's always there on your phone and, you know, but being a musician, you make so many connections and friends in other states and places and I don't want to sacrifice that, you know, I, I want to be able to talk to those people and network with those people and uh, having a, a band, you have to be able to do that. You know, we wouldn't be have been able to coordinate this interview or we wouldn't even have been able to play Festival of the Witch if it wasn't for social media, so. Right. So now, when do you guys play a hometown show? Do you still make physical flyers? Um, not all the time. For out-of-town shows we do, uh, most of the time, the venues that we play at uh, will make flyers. Um, we use social media for, you know, event pages all the time. Another crucial point to the social media thing. So, you know, and we, we've been around long enough now that people locally know who we are. And, you know, usually word of mouth also plays a big part. Now, Kevin, what's your favorite food? My favorite food? Uh, yeah, probably steak. Just just straight up, just a medium rare steak. Which is terrible, because as a touring musician, I can't afford steak. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How about favorite drink? Alcohol? Alcohol, non-alcohol, whatever. Like Lemmy. <laughs> yeah, the Lemmy. So, can you pick uh, your top five favorite bands? That's, that's tough. <laughs> oh, I listen to so much music, but here, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. In, in no particular order. I, I, I could, certainly can pull that off. Um, I have to say, probably Death. Death for sure would be, I mean, it's definitely the band that got me into death metal. Um, I would have to say, uh, probably Metallica, because Cliff Burton was the bass player who got me inspired to play bass in the first place. For whom the Bell Tools was the first song I ever learned. Um... I would have to say uh, Ackercock. It's a progressive black and death metal band from the UK. Um, they do some wild shit stuff. Sorry, I don't know if I lost. Yeah, you, you, can, you can fucking swear um, all you want on the show. All right, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, they, they do some crazy, crazy stuff, and I've never heard a band like them. Um, and there's there's just so much music out there. Um, hmm. I'm always I'm always terrible at this. <laughs> well, terrible you, question to ask. Well, you, you got a top three anyway. There you go. Oh, uh, uh, here I got another one. Opeth. Yeah. So. There we go. There's four. Now who who inspired you when you were growing up, like musicians? You said Juan, Juan Ricardo writes all the lyrics, right? Yeah, uh, Juan and Kern collaborated on the lyrics for Doppelganger, but Juan wrote most of them, and 
and he wrote all of them for Fire Breather. So for for the when you guys uh, the next album, are you gonna are you gonna be writing any songs? Oh yeah, I'm sure ly- lyrically, maybe. Uh, that you know, we let Juan do that. Juan, Juan uh, is pretty good at that. And um, as far as writing actual music goes, I wrote one of the songs on Top of Gear. I wrote uh, Inside the Monster. Um, and, you know, Doppelganger, we wanted to get it out before Europe. So Curran actually buckled down and wrote a lot of it. And I wrote and played all the bass on it. Um, so this next album, now that we have time to do something, you know, actually collaborate now that I'm playing guitar, you know, we'll be able to sit down and write and I'll be able to write more. And I think that the sound will change for the better. You know, it'll be definitely a, a good evolution. Yeah, do you guys have any songs written yet for the for next album? Well, we're actually thinking about doing uh, a couple EPs. We uh, are definitely going to do an EP called Born in Fire, Forged in Flame. Um, it's going to feature some uh, re-recorded Fire Breather songs, as well as three new songs and uh, a cover of Raining Blood, which we've been throwing in our live set. Um, and we're talking about doing a couple other EPs, you know, just put stuff, some stuff out for free and, you know, have some fun and, you know, get it out. Now, what uh, websites can people find uh, Soundless Sky on to find out information? Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Bandcamp. You can go on Pierce Steele's website and order a physical copy of the album. Um, you can go on iTunes and buy the album. We're working on getting it on uh, Spotify and all that other stuff. I believe it might be on Amazon now. But if you, it's actually pretty cool. If you go on Google and search on the Sky Doppelganger, you can find it on Walmart. That's cool. Yeah, they they actually misspelled doppelganger, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they got it at least, right? Yeah, it's there. It's there. So in the next uh, five to ten years from now, where do you see Sun this Sky? Well, we uh, did that Europe run, and we've been brainstorming and doing some other tour runs. We uh, are looking, hopefully, within this year or early next year to do a full U.S. and hopefully Canada run. We've been discussing South America. Um, we've also been talking about going back to Europe again. This time we want to we want to go back to Eastern Europe, but we want to definitely hit Western Europe this time. You know, Pure Steel is a German record label, and we want to be able to hit the fans out there because, you know, I know people know Juan through Wretch out there and you know Juan's other retro, uh, ventures you know like Ritual and all that so you know we definitely want to get ourselves out there and for the next five to ten years I mean I hope we can just continue to do what we're doing and you know do another tour and do another tour after that and, you know it's, it's just a it's like a set of stairs you know you gotta take one step at a time now in your own words what are the pros and cons of the music business Meet with the band, or you know, well, you know, we don't do that sort of thing. We're not like 
you know, we're not making that, you know, we're not going to charge you to meet us, but, you know, you get uh, early release on songs and, like, maybe tabs, you know, something like that. You know, if you pay a certain amount, you might get in all our shows for free and, you know, get a shirt every month or something. And it's things like that, you know, you see a lot of bands on this platform that are just making all this money that, you know, they wouldn't be able to make, you know, in the current state of the business, you know, all these, all these big bands, you know, with visas and losing out on tours and losing money and, you know, you, you never know what you're going to get with playing a show. You might play in front of five people or play in front of a hundred people or 200 people or 10 people. You never know. So it's always a gamble going out to shows and to have, you know, that supplemental income, you know, while still supplying to the fans who are, you know, paying, I think that sort of thing might be a good step for the music industry. You know, it's, it's like self-funded music. And a lot of people have, you know, differing opinions about that because, you know, you'll say, oh, you know, you're asking for money and bands shouldn't do that, but you're giving people something in return. You know, it's it's not just asking for handouts. And, you know, a lot of these record labels, you know, Pierce Hill actually has been very kind enough to give us some money for our merchandise when we went to Europe. But, you know, I, I have many friends and many bands, you know, who you, you hear just, you don't get very much support. And, you know, you get stuck in, you know, a money thing. And it's, it's, it's tough being in a band. You don't make very much money. You you play you play because you love it. What do you what do you think about promoters that do paper play? Pay, yeah. uh, I I'm not a fan of it. <laughs> I mean I don't I don't think many musicians are. You know, uh, some the Cleveland Agora here. You know, the big shows are pay to play or well not not pay to play but it's ticket sales. You know, I I personally don't do pay to play shows. Um, some of Skype doesn't, I mean, you know, we, we don't need to pay to play, you know. No, some of Skype, you guys manage or self-manage? Uh, we have a manager, it's, uh, through Sentinel Music, uh, Brian Goldstein is our manager, he manages Power Theory and a few other bands. Now, if you can have a guest on a future, uh, recording, uh, like live, live person or dead person, who would it be? He was a Nevermore, uh, but probably Jeff Loomis. <laughs> Not that he has anything against Jeff in any way, shape, or form, but uh, I, Jeff was definitely one of my guitar heroes growing up. Yeah, Loomis is a shredder indeed. Oh yeah, one of the best. And he's still doing it with Arch Enemy. Oh yeah, he's not skipping a beat, that's for sure. Doing very well for himself. Yeah, you were talking about, like, meet and greet playing for that. I was thinking about Kiss, well, like, over $1,000 for their VIP meet and greet. Oh, yeah, yeah man. The, and, you know, they have that Kiss cruise where, you know, people pay five, six thousand $6,000 to go see Kiss on a boat. It's like, oh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So do you have any uh, advice for young bands starting out these days? the money forget it <laughs> forget it hey you never know you know it might come down to the point where you're able to live comfortably and you know as in my opinion you know as a 
modern day musician, if you can make enough money to live just comfortably enough, you're doing what makes you happy. Uh, that's all that matters. Okay, so Kevin, you got any last words? Um, well, we're gearing up here to, you know, go down, go well, up for us, go up to Chicago and uh, play Festival of the Witch, and we're very excited, and it's going to be a great time. Yeah, so if you're in the sh Chicago area, come out Friday and see Sunless Sky at 9.15 to, to 9.55. Yes, come on out. Come come drink with us, vodka. <laughs> well, Kevin, thanks a lot for your time for the interview. Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, you have a good night. You too. Thanks, man. All right, bye. Bye.